we'll have three players up here. Yep. So you're talking about in the open locker room session?
Good morning. Uh, welcome to the dais here at Little Caesars Arena in Detroit. We appreciate your coverage of the 2024 Midwest Regionals. We'll start our press conference shortly here with Gonzaga head coach Mark Few. Before we do, just a few housekeeping meetings, please. Uh, first and foremost, as a courtesy to the other media members in the interview room, please remember to silence your cell phones. We have microphone holders on either side of the room. Please raise your hand for a mic to be brought to you. And when you do ask a question, please introduce yourself and your media affiliation. All press conferences will be transcribed electronically by ASAP Sports. So please speak clearly into the microphone for those purposes. Please note that the video recording of press conferences on cameras or on cell phones is prohibited throughout the Midwest Regional. If time permits during each session, we will take questions from the media both here uh, in, the, in the interview room and also on Zoom. Questions from the media here in the interview room will be first, followed by questions on Zoom. Again, time permitting there. With that, we will begin today's press conference with head coach Mark Few. Coach, if you wouldn't mind starting us out with an opening statement, we'll go from there. Yeah, hey, it's just awesome to uh, be back through another sweet uh, 16. As I told the guys, like, uh, I mean, it's it's just a great week. It's it's such a fun week to advance and have a little bit of time to hang out and enjoy each other. And I think that's really really important with this group because this group, I've had some really really close teams with this group's as close as as any of them. And I also told them like, as good as this week is, the the next week gets even better and it was the best week so uh, uh, but we're, we're fired up we know we got our our, uh, our hands full we played Purdue earlier in the year and they're a great team and been great uh, throughout this whole year thank you let's go to questions for coach few please and we'll start on the front left need to get a mic to him please Anybody, let's just yeah. get a roll in here. Everybody, take a crack here. Brian Newbert from GoldenBlack.com. Coach, can you just kind of tell us how your team is different from November, but also how Purdue is different from what you've seen watching this week? Yeah, hey, I, I think we're both different. I, I, I just, I know in our case, we're vastly different. Um, we had some, whew, we had some pretty rough patches there early if you watch some of our practices and even some of our early games. But, uh, um, we actually played really, really hard against them the first time. Uh, we just turned the ball over too much and shot way, way, way too many uh, uh, threes. Uh, so I think hopefully we'll get that cleared up. We're sharing it better, and I think we got way, we're much more purposeful on the offensive end. Um, but you know they, they're 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 better too. So uh, I think that'll be the the biggest challenge there. Vedant Gupta from Global Kid Media. Coach View, since I was eight years old, for nine years we see the Zags consistently in the Sweet 16 and, of course, the fantastic handstands in the locker room. I don't know if they were fantastic. They were, they were moved by emotion but pretty, pretty marginal on the execution. Well, they inspire <laughs> me. i got to know from then to now, how has your approach changed to these Sweet 16s? Um, I mean, I, I, hey, I'm, like I said at the start of this thing, excited as ever, I think uh, – even for me, I, I mean, I take nothing for granted uh, any of these years, but I think this one probably feels as special as any just because, you know, we were, we were behind the eight ball there for a while, you know, and, and uh, you know, there was a lot of doubts and, and we had to really buckle down and, and play great down the stretch even to get in this tournament, you know, which is – it's really, really hard to get into, and it's even harder to move on to a, a Sweet 16. So, uh, you know, I think in lieu of all that, uh, you know, this one feels great, and it also feels great just kind of going through the journey with this group. I mean, they didn't, they never wavered. They stuck together. They stayed really, really coachable, and uh, you know, I think that's been rewarding too. Okay, we got two questions in the third row, starting here on the east side. Hey, Coach uh, Eddie Pels with AP. Good to see you yeah, again. Yeah, you too. Um, you know, the Zach Eady issue, uh, you, uh, can you kind of describe the challenge of dealing with somebody that unique? And also, if there's any advantage that you are one of those few teams that's played him a couple times. Uh, hey, first of all, phenomenal, phenomenal player and just, you know, needs to be congratulated for putting together these seasons to be, you know, college player of the year two years in a row. Um, and just, yeah, I mean, I've been doing this a long, long, long time, and there's just, we, you just have never dealt with something like Zach, 
you know, that size, but yet that good of a, a player. I mean, he's really developed his touch. Uh, his ball goes in now. It's very soft. Uh, great passer if you do choose to double team him. Um, shoots free throws very, very well. Um, obviously, at that size, really, really impacts the game on, on the defensive end. So, I mean, he's an entity that you just don't don't see. The, the positive is we have seen him. We played him in the PK-85 um, early a year ago. And then, I, like I mentioned, we, play, we, just, we played him in the Maui tournament, uh, you know, on Thanksgiving. So, at least we've had, we've felt his size and, and his strength. And, and, then, and then also played against a really, really good Purdue team. So, if anything, we can draw off some, on some of those experiences. One more in the third round, the left. Uh, Dana O'Neill at The Athletic. Dana finally <laughs> makes it back with the Zags. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Thank you. Um, Coach Boehner brings a sort of burden to this Final Four, like to, or to this Sweet 16, to try to get to the Final Four. You carried that for a little while. I think every coach carries it for a little while. How do you manage that? I, mean, I, I just think you just uh, – totally unequivocally just focus on the task at hand and it's just kind of a next game mentality I mean I, I think they've done a wonderful job with that they, they've hit it head on throughout the whole year it seems like and all the way back to the preseason and uh, yeah you just kind of go next game mentality and and uh, uh, you know man th it, it certainly hasn't affected them in this tournament I mean they've been lights out so far you know, in these these first two games. So uh, now I think all that stuff's off, and now they're now they're now they're playing, and they seem to be playing their best basketball, at least based on these last two outings. Front row here, uh, Dave Bowling, Spokane. Coach, uh, when you watch Ben play, do you see a little bit of throwback zag in him and his style and combativeness, but with New Zag skills and, and talents. Uh, I, I mean, I, I I wouldn't. I think well, the Zags have always we've always been like that. You know, I think sometimes you get this old Zag, new Zag stuff. I mean, first of all, those the old Zags were really, really good and talented, and the, our new run are have been really, really tough and got a lot of old school to them, and. Uh, what he is is he's just he is a zag, right? I mean, just heart and soul, and and just I mean, he just embodies everything our program's about: his toughness, his how he prepares, how he just values team, and just and really works at keeping everybody together. And and then again, this particular group just really, really rallies around him, you know, and really, you know, and we figured that out. Uh, so it's just important to have him around and on the floor because they really respond to him. Right side in the fourth row. Uh, Travis Green from Crim2 News in Spokane. Hey, Mark. Uh, I know you talked about it a little bit earlier with both teams being different than when you played earlier this year. And we know from following you guys this season, specifically you guys, how much can you draw from that matchup? Are you going to look at that previous game heading into this? or? Yeah, no, no. We've looked at it a lot. I mean, look, both of us will change, but we're not going to change that much. I mean, we kind of are who we are. And like I said, especially when you're dealing with somebody – as special as a Evie, uh, you know, we've we've at least experienced it, so we're not trying to describe it to our guys and and show other teams playing against it. We actually played against it, uh, so we can obviously draw on those times when we were successful and try to correct the ones when we're when we're not. And it's not just about him. I mean, uh, Braden Smith's had a great year, and you know, uh, I mean, they've been great, you know, this year, and they got great balance. And uh, yeah, I'm just, you know, Matt's as good a coach as there is in all the college basketball. He get, puts them all in the right spots and places and they execute perfectly. And then, you know, they're constantly changing and subbing and putting, putting more skilled guys in these positions and these actions to make it really, really hard to guard. So uh, it, it'll be fun, uh, you know, trying to deal with all that. Second row on the left, Coach. Lafayette Journal and Curry, you're kind of going off of what you just said. I think Matt's done a good job of getting the role players to buy into those roles, you know, seven, eight deep. What is the challenge in that? And when you've got a team that's this good, I think those are the guys that, that obviously make a difference when you get this far in the tournament. 
Oh, yeah, I mean, they have a lot of weapons, a lot of weapons. And so just I think it's really imperative that our guys, you know, really, really dial into personnel. <laughs> and they, they, they all have their different strengths, you know, the ones that he does bring off. And so shooters, we got to, you know, make sure we do a great job on them. I think they're most dangerous when they're making a bunch of threes, you know, like they did the last game. And, and uh, um so we got to do a great job there, and then we got to understand when shooters aren't in. Obviously, we got to shore up the glass or shore up duck-ins inside, and, and uh, you know all of the above, and all the while, you know, keep those guards, you know, in front of us, and and uh, do a good job there, especially in transition. They hurt us in transition over in uh, uh, Hawaii, also. So we need to do a better job there. Last two for coach on the left side in the front row, Chris. Chris Solari, Detroit Free Press, Mark, uh, kind of along those same lines. How have their guards maybe played off of Edie? And how has you seen, in the more recent games, how have you seen the changes uh, with their backcourt based on that? Well, I mean, their backcourt was good, really good against us in Hawaii. So especially uh, Smith was great, I thought. Um, I mean, Gillis is, is shooting it great right now. Obviously, you know, that's what lawyer does um, the best thing they do is they just all I mean they've had so many reps together now they, they all play so well together they're excellent uh, post feeders their timing and and when and where they find him and then uh, you know they're they're dangerous especially on the, on those ball screens you got to shore him up rolling but you also have you know these guys can make plays and then I think Jones has been a and a really, really good addition for him, you know, from when we played him two years ago in Portland to this year. I mean, he does so much. Um, he's, he's, he's a tough guard, and then he's a handful on the other end, the defensive side of things. Last one, third row. Hey, Mark, Pat Forty from Sports Illustrated. You and Matt both have run your programs at a high level for a long time in changing landscapes. How have you adapted while still keeping kind of the core of how you do things the same? Gosh, Pat, that's that's been as big a ch bigger challenge than probably getting these dudes this year to play, uh, uh, you know, get back playing in a in a good way. But uh, you know what? It's it's kind of been easy in some ways because it's just Gonzaga and it's just how we operate and it's who we recruit and and it's who we always end up with. They just the guys we end up with just end up kind of belonging there. And the guys we miss out on are frustrating at the time and uh you know but then you end up like yeah maybe he didn't belong here it's i always tell the staffs like that old garth brooks song thank god for unanswered prayers you need to listen to the words to that sometime it's pretty uh pretty uh pretty good but anyway uh but it is getting hard it's getting really really hard i mean we could spend three hours up here matt and i both because <laughs> we've tried and tried and the one thing I would say is they need to start listening and, and to us coaches, especially those of us coaches who have been around a long time and have tried to do it the right way and, uh, and you know, get it out of this bureaucratic you know, stranglehold where nothing gets done and then you know, this stuff just is, is crushes us when it, when it hits, all, the, all these changes. And we could all see it coming, you know? So hopefully we can get to the point where football coaches and basketball coaches are on these on the really decision making things that can kind of help us guide us through this thing because this this tournament is just so awesome and so special and so great. I mean, we've got to make sure we keep this thing rolling. Thanks, coach. Appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow. Yep.
I'll sit there. All right, we're ready to continue here with the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Fellas, congratulations on getting to the Sweet 16. Welcome to Detroit. Appreciate it. So from your left to your right, we have Nolan Hickman, Graham E.K., and Braden Huff. We'll start with questions here in the interview room first, and if we do have time, we will take some questions on Zoom. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and kick it over to the media. Let's start in the back on the left side. Uh, Nolan, going into February, To this point you're at right now um honestly man um i think after that um uh, yeah i think after that st mary's uh st mary's game that we had in wcc uh conference tournament i think after that we just started buckling down uh understanding that we're not going to be facing st mary's of the world or, or san francisco's of the world anymore and we're you know we got we, we got the chance to beat up on somebody else so um yeah man i think after that we just started you know Buckling down, understanding what, what what our strengths are and what our weaknesses are, and we went from there. Got a question on the right side in the back. Uh, Todd Golden with CNN Chat. Graham, uh, since you saw Purdue in November, what's the biggest thing that's changed for your team uh, that's put you on the path to, to have a chance to play them again? Um, the biggest thing probably is just how many games we've played since then. Uh, like our connectivity and our synergy is on a whole nother level than it was when we were playing our fourth game against Purdue. Um, and we're clicking right now on the right page. Additional questions for a student athlete. Myron in the back. Graham, how do you guard a 290 pounds following him? Um, just try to stay legal. Um, continue to keep the physicality up as much as possible, as much as the rest will allow me to, and um, just meet them early. Um, yeah, that's about it. And just trusting my teammates that they'll have my back with good ball pressure, good communication on the floor. Left side, second row. Sam King, Lafayette Journal and Courier. Nolan, everybody talks about Zach Eady, but I think the guards are really good on this Purdue team. Kind of how do uh, Lance Jones, Fletcher Lawyer, and Braden Smith really make that team go? No, they definitely complement each other really well. Um, you know, especially with Zach on the on the post. You know, they're always able to find him. You know, whenever things are not going well on the offensive end. Um, you know, Zach Eady is always there. You know, I feel like they're a scapegoat. You know, when they when they need a bucket, they go to him. You know, and they always find a way to. Um, so yeah, they they complement each other real well. Back to the left side. Graham, you played uh, Purdue. I mean, the first couple of games, you'd miss all of last year to injury. How different are you today compared to who you were? Uh, in that first game after coming off the injury? Yeah, I'm a lot different. Uh, my win's better. I say my touch is better. The feel for the game is better. Um, the feel in our offense for myself is better. Um, the game just feels a lot slower than it was at that time. Right side, fourth row. AJ Hall, SWX. This is for any of you guys. Mark mentioned a few times in his press conference just how special this team is to him, clearly referencing off the court. What is unique about this group of guys that we can't see when watching games? Braden, you want to take that one? Yeah, I got it. Um, I think we're just a really tight-knit group. Um, I think we, we went through some ups and downs early in the season. and um, I think through that, we got stronger on the court and also off the court. And um, I think that's shown in our play lately. So um, yeah, it's, it's a fun group to be around. Everyone loves each other on this team. So um, it's a really cool group. I don't think you see that, you see that a ton, especially with the transfer portal and everything in college basketball now. It's, it's cool that we've got such a, such a tight-knit group. Other questions for the student athletes? Do we have any questions on Zoom? Seeing none. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. Right, appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow.
Sounds good, Missy. Yeah, I'll see you. For sure. We'll be around all weekend. Check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two, 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 check, 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 one, two, check, check, one, two, check, check, one, two. Turned off. Check, check, one, two. Check, check, one, two, one, two, one, two. Check, check. One, two. One, two, one, two. Check, check, one, two. You got moderator, mic check. Moderator, mic check. Moderator. Check one, two. Yeah, it's just way too hot. Check one, two. Check, check, check. Check one, two. Coach, Coach Mike here. Check. Dude, just bring the, the house monitors down. Check one, two. What about the floor monitors here? Check one, two. Check, check, check. That sounds really good. Still got a little bit of a ring. Player, player, player mic, player mic, player mic, player mic, player mic, player mic. Check one, two. Still getting a ring. Player mic, player mic. Check one, two. Check, check, check. Check one, two. Check one, two. Player mic. Check one, two. Check, check, check. Check one, two. Player mic, leaning back. Player mic, leaning forward. Player mic. Player mic, check one, two. Check, check, check. Next, or are you good? Okay. Player mic, check. Six, check one, two, six. Seven, check one, two, seven, check one, two, seven. Okay. Sure, you know, you're good. Four, check one, two, mic four. What's, the, you get, you're hearing the ring? Yeah. Okay. Five, five, check five, five. You're good. Four. Four, check four, mic four. One, two, four, four, lean back, lean forward, check four. Okay. One more five. One more five. Check on five. One, two, five, lean back, five, lean forward, five, five, five. Okay. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. 
Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check, check, one, two, coach, 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 coach. Coach, coach, coach. Coach, 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 coach. Maybe it does work now. Coach in the corner. 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 we had was this the dead spot here yeah. for whatever reason that was going out right here <laughs> seems to be okay now seems to be okay now coach 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 he could have just had his mouth down too you know what i mean it could have been like oh hey blah, 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 blah. left side left side right side right side Check, 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 check. 
Check, check, check. Check, check, one, two. Check, check, one, two. Check, check, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Moderator, mic check. Moderator, mic check. Moderator, check one, check two, check three. Moderator. Mic one. Mic one check. Mic one check. Got a little ring. Mic one. Mic one. Check one, two, one, two. Good. Coach Mike. Coach Mike. Matt Painter, check. Mike, Mike, check on Matt Painter's mic. Check. Player one. Player one. Mike four. Mic four, check. Mic four, mic four, check. Mic four, still a little hot. Check one two, mic check again. Hot in the room, not. Check one two, leaning forward, leaning back. Check one two, check one two. Okay. Mic check five, mic check five. Mic check five, check one, two, check, check, check. Mic six, check mic six, check, 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 check mic six, mic six, check mic seven, check mic seven, mic seven, check, one, two, three, good.
Check one, two, one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. So we need
Check one, two. Check, check, check. Okay. Okay. Yep. So we're coming program out here. Check one, two. Okay. 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 Check one, two. Check one, two. One, two. Check one, two. Okay. Check one, two. Okay. So now it should be right. Check one, two. Okay. Check one, two. One, two. Are you getting anything? Okay. You want to check it now I'll, while I'm working on it? Check one, two, one, two, check one, two, check, 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 checking the mic, checking the mic, check one, two, check, 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 check one, two. You should be getting me. How is that? Nothing. I'm, I'm checking the, the sub out, the program out, which I'm getting levels on the board for, so we should be hearing that. Check one, two, one, two, check one, two. Okay, five minutes out, guys. Check one, two, one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Check, 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 check one, two. Check one, two. Check in the house. Check one, two. Check, check, check. Check program only. Checking program only. Check one, two. Checking house and program. House and program. Check one, two. Check, check, check. Check one, two. Checking program only. Program only. Check one, two. Check one, two. Checking program only. Check one, two, one, two. Check, check, check. Still checking, still checking, still checking the mic, checking the mic. Okay. Are we good, guys? Okay. Check, 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 check. their mics anyway yeah okay great thanks for the help
we'll, we'll let you know when. But yeah. <clears throat> yeah, one time. Yeah. Let everybody get in here. All right, good afternoon. Welcome back to the interview room at Harry Little Caesars Arena for the Midwest Regional. We're pleased to be continuing our press conference coverage today with the Purdue Boilermakers. Gentlemen, welcome to Detroit. Congrats on advancing to the Sweet 16. From your left to your right, we have Braden Smith, Foster Lawyer, and Zach Eady. Uh, for the media in the room, please be sure to silence your cell phones, raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question. We have mic holders on either side of the room. Uh, please speak clearly into the microphone as this press conference is being uh, transcribed by ASAP Sports. Uh, we'll start with questions here in the interview room, and then if we have any on Zoom, we'll go that way. So we'll go ahead and open it up for the student-athletes, starting with Myron in the back. Myron Metcalf, ESPN. Zach, how much different is this team from last year's group, uh, and how have we seen that so far in this tournament? Yeah, uh, on paper, obviously, it's very similar to last year's team, but uh, the, like the things that we – how we run our offense, how we play defense, like everything about our team is completely different. Um, obviously – they became sophomores, um, so they kind of their body gets more used to it. They get the game slows down for them. They understand uh, more things, um, and then the addition of Lance and Cam um, has really given us like a pop. Second row on the right, uh, Zach uh, Jamie Strashen from uh, CBC in, in Toronto. Um, can you uh, first off just uh, talk a little bit about your basketball journey to kind of getting to this point and uh, you know, from Toronto many years ago, and uh, what kind of contingent are you expecting uh, here in Detroit playing so close to home? Um, I'm not sure kind of what, what type of contingent there will be. Um, my, my story's kind of been pretty well documented, but I've, obviously I got into sport late, um, 
picked up an offer from Purdue pretty early or pretty quickly. Um, came here. It's been a great four years. Like every every year, it's been like it's been really really good the way it's progressed for me. It's helped me kind of like build up my confidence, build it, build it up, like understanding of the game and everything, and to now where the point I'm at now. Um, it's it's been everything I could have asked for. First row on the left. Vedant Gupta from Global Kid Media. Um, for all three of you, you came in as freshmen with a lot of talent, but Zach, obviously your footwork, your leadership, your passing, both Fletcher and Braden, your leadership skills. I'm going to talk about the adversity of last year and this journey and how helpful that's been to kind of help this team's identity. Let's start with Braden on that one. Yeah, so I mean, we've seen almost every situation possible. We've been through it. It's, it's happened to us. So um, I think just after, after everything that happened last year, um, and applying to this year, we kind of understand how to handle those situations. And obviously, it helps me and Fletch um, mature in a little bit and kind of figuring out how things go as time goes on. So I think that helps a lot as well. And we just got a lot of guys that enjoy to compete and just enjoy the game of basketball. So it makes it fun and easy for us. Fletcher, you want to add to that? Yeah, it's, it's been difficult. It's been a long season. It's been a lot of time since last year. And we've gotten a lot better. We've gotten a lot better as people, players, and teammates. And I think that uh, everything we've went through uh, with the summer, a lot of harder workouts, we were pushing each other a lot more. And going to Europe together, it was just a lot of different things that we did to kind of stick together and uh, be ready to go come March this season. Yeah, kind of what Braden and bo both of them said. Um, we've been through a lot together as a team, like as a unit. Uh, I think uh, when you go through things as a group and as a unit, you understand kind of how to deal with them. Uh, so there's no situation that we can really be put in that we haven't been put in before. There's no style of basketball team can play that we haven't played against before. Uh, so I think we're really well, well prepared for everything. First row on the left. Uh, Brian Newberg, Golden Black Top. Is back this Um, It's definitely, it's a good rule. It's, it's been called for me a few times. Um, it's kind of a hard thing. It's a hard thing to re for the refs to, to judge because um, there's so much, like, obviously so much, like, tangling up that happens on rebounds. Um, it's, a, it's a good rule, um, obviously. It, and I think it's, it's been used correctly. Um, it's just a tough call for the refs to make, obviously. Back row on the right. Uh, guys, uh, whoever wants to answer this one, obviously Gonzaga is a team you faced earlier this year. I know that was a long time ago, the very start of the year. How much can you take from that game into this one? Let's start with Foster on that. What's up, Fletcher, by the way? Oh, I, I apologize. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it has been a long time ago, and we've learned a lot since then. We play differently. They play quite a bit differently. But uh, watching the film, th those two guards can go. And you see that. And you see how they attack pick and rolls. You see how they attack in open space. So really just kind of us seeing that, seeing what they've done recently as well, and uh, continuing to try to play our game. We don't want to play into their hands as they like to get out and really go in transition. So just stopping their guards and uh, limiting their bigs as they play three of them now. My apologies, Fletcher Lawyer. Uh, additional questions for the student athletes? Let's go to the back right. Uh, quick side note. I don't know if we can turn up the players a little bit. It's kind of hard to hear them. Uh, back here. But for Braden and Fletcher, uh, how much different is this team with Zach being able to play in space defensively uh, better than he was able to do that a year ago? Yeah, I mean, he's worked his butt off um, this summer. Um, I mean, just seeing him in the gym, um, he really put a lot of time towards it. And we competed against each other this summer a lot. So, I mean, there was times where he was guarding me and he did an unbelievable job. So, I mean, he really puts a lot of time and hard work into it. And it's obviously showed this year, and it, it helps us a lot because when they get those switches and he has to guard a guard in the late shot clock, like he's able to do so. Way in the back there, standing up. Hey, guys. Sam Sprunger, Big Talk ASAP Network. I want you guys, all, any of you guys or all three of you, to talk about Lance and how much of a difference he's made to this year's team compared to and not taking anything away from last year's team, just that difference that he's brought to this team this year. Braden? Yeah, no, I think not necessarily the on-court stuff, but off the court, just how he is as a person. Um, he's super joyful. He's always smiling, um, and he always just brings energy to the team. So kind of just seeing that and having him on our team just kind of gives us a boost as well and just makes us want to play harder and just enjoy kind of, you know, just the time of being together. So, Front row.
Yeah, I mean, we're all we're all here at the crunch time uh, ending here, so we're just playing our best basketball. And I think just as we've progressed and kind of understood every situation that we've been through and we've played against, um, we're able and to be ready to play for anything and understand everything. So I mean, they're obviously a great team and they've changed a lot as well. But so I think we'll be fine. Second row on the right. Zach, can you just talk a little bit about uh, the importance of, of your family and how they've been a part of your journey getting here? Yeah, um, my mom's obviously, uh, she's kind of changed her whole life just to be there for me. Um, she's lived in Toronto her whole life. Um, as soon as I got to Purdue, she got an Airbnb and stayed out there with me. Um, every season she's done that. Um, and it's been great for me to kind of just have someone in the stands who I know and who I recognize and like I'm not this isn't even the country I'm from like I'm not like obviously Purdue is like a family to me but my real family is like it's, it's my mom and my dad and my brother and just have my mom there for me um, like every day like every game good or bad um, how I was playing as a freshman how I'm playing now like she's there supporting me the same way uh, and that, that's really big for me. Uh, for Zach, do you have people coming down from Canada? It's obviously right across the river. No, t tickets were uh, a little bit harder to find for this game. So uh, I think they're, they're happy with watching just from Toronto. Additional questions for the student athletes? Anybody on Zoom? Seeing none. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. One, two, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, check one. One, two, oh, here you go. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Check one, two, check
All right, welcome back, everyone. We are now pleased to be joined by Purdue head coach Matt Painter. Coach, welcome back to Detroit. Congratulations on advancing to the Sweet 16. Thank you. Before we start today's Q&A with Coach Painter, uh, for the media here in the interview room, please raise your hand for a microphone to be brought to you. This, these press conferences, as we stated earlier, are being transcribed by ASAP Sports. Uh, with that, we'll begin today's session with Purdue head coach Matt Painter. You want to start us out with an opening statement, please? Sure. Uh, obviously excited about being here, uh, competing. We know we have a tough opponent in Gonzaga, um, who we played earlier in the year. Um, they have great front line, great guards, just great players in general, Hall of Fame coach. Um, I think the experience of playing them can, gives you a reference point, like it gives them a reference point, but I think it means very little. I don't think either team played very well in the game. I don't think either team shot very well in the game. So they had a lot of open looks that they don't they normally make in that game. So we're going to have to do a much better job defending them. We're going to have to do a much better job of taking care of the basketball. Um, we were very fortunate to turn it over as much as we did and still um, pull out the victory. So um, hopefully we can shore up some of those things, just like they're looking at film, trying to shore up some of the shortcomings that they had in the game also. But they've had a fabulous year and uh, have been very, very successful, obviously, for a long, long time. Thanks, Coach. Let's start out on the left side in the fourth row. Hey, Matt. Pat Forty from Sports Illustrated. I asked Mark this question as well. You two guys have been consistently successful in a very changing landscape of your sport. How have you managed to adapt without compromising what makes your programs what they are? Right. Um, you know, I think for us, um, you know, we, we struggled, lost a couple years in a row like nine, ten years ago. Um, we didn't need to do a better job in recruiting. We needed to do a better job in evaluating. And, and at that time, you know, we made some adjustments and just we had to do a better job of digging in and getting, obviously you can see talent, um, but what comes with talent? You know, you want production. You want guys that are growing. But we, for us, we wanted people that wanted to get their education at Purdue and we wanted that balance. And I think that's where we've gotten, we've had a really good balance where guys want to be at Purdue, um, you know, it's not just the recruiting and you get them. It's, it's building a relationship and you don't always have to be buddy buddy with every single guy, but you have to be honest with them. And that's what we've tried to do is uh, just be as honest as we can and be a truth teller. And I, I think that's how we've really sustained a lot is by getting the right people in the room, getting the right players, you know, right combination of a, of a person and a player. First row on the left. The game in November, how is it different now, but also how is Purdue different now? Well, I think they're different just obviously looking at who they start, you know, inserting Greg into the lineup and Anton Watson's, um, you know, kind of durability and his ability to, to, to guard different people um, allows them to be bigger, but yet Greg has great, he has great size, but he, you know, his skill level shooting the basketball really helps him. He's competitive. You know, Stromer coming off the bench instead of starting, he still gives him that punch off the bench where he can shoot the basketball. He, you know, he goes to the glass just like Greg does. But um, just quality players. You know, he just kind of found the right mix. But they can play big and they can play smaller. And I, I think that flexibility for them has, has been really good. Um, but, but more than anything, they got really good guard play. I think your guards have to play well. Your guards have to take care of the basketball. You know, Nimhard and, and Hickman are two of the you know, better guards in the country. Um, I, I just I like their combination. I think they, they, they just have a little bit better combination. It seems to be more fluid for them. But the thing with Gonzaga is they can beat you in a lot of ways. You know, those guards can break you down. Those, those bigs can get on the glass. You know, Graham Ike can score on the block. Um, they bring in Braden Huff, and uh, who stretches the defense also. So you've got a lot of skill, you got a lot of size, but you also got playmaking guards. It's just a pretty good recipe for success. Go back to the fourth row on the left. Yeah, Coach, it's Chuck Culpepper from the Washington Post. Um, I, we all know how mad this event is, and I think, um, well, basketball's been really good to you in life. It's re been really mean to you sometimes, too. I wonder how you process the latter? What's your method for processing yeah, when it's it, mean? Yeah, the game doesn't always love you back. Um, but you got to understand that going in. You know, you're going to play a game, one team's going to win and one team's going to lose. When you get used to winning a lot, the expectations that you raise and get it, you know, for your program makes it even harder than that. 
You know, we've been beat up a lot, or I've been beat up a lot for the people that have beaten us. You know, we're the higher seed, we should win, this and that. And I always say that takes away from your opponent. That's not fair to them. Like, they've earned it. Like, we didn't get cheated out of anything. Somebody beat us. And so I think for us, the most important thing to do and what we've always tried to do is be honest with ourselves and evaluation no matter how your season ends so you can hopefully make those corrections. But you can't correct your team or you can't correct your players unless you correct yourself. And so that's what I've always tried to be, no matter what it comes from. Because everybody has an answer, right? You know, you, you listen to everybody, you listen to nobody. You know, you have to be honest and you have to understand things and you can't be stubborn, you know, too. And so for us, I just kind of looked at it as our skill level had to be better. But our, we had to have improvement from people. I felt like we had some guys that could have shot a lot better for us the previous year but it's their first year or they just didn't shoot well. I believe that they were going to shoot better this year, and they did. We had to add some quickness, some athleticism. I think we've done that in Cam Heidi and Miles Colvin. And then Lance Jones has really given us a punch. You know? And so now Braden Smith makes improvements. Mason Gill is as solid as a rock. Uh, Trey Kaufman Wren gets some more minutes. He can score the basketball. So just the combination of those things, we felt like we had to make those type of improvements. But um, we also didn't want to run, run from anything. And so like, and some of our losses aren't on our players. Last year's is on our players, right? But like, we've had some other losses that, that way. And I think that builds up. You know, we've gotten into the, the second weekend a lot, but we have, we've only advanced to the Elite Eight one time. And so like, you know, we've raised those expectations, but um, like I said, just, just trying to be as honest as we can and then get to work. You know, try, we can still outwork people and we can still be better together than other people no matter who they sign. Let's flip it over the right side in the second row. Hey, Coach. Eddie Pels from AP. Um, we're in this supposed era of, you know, positionless basketball where right. everyone can do everything no matter how big or small they are. Obviously, you have a, a kind of an exceptional seven foot four kid, but right. is there anything about positionless basketball that can still fit in to what you do or do you throw it all out? Yeah, no, no. We, we take the, um, the best players that we have and we circle around them, you know, no matter who they are. You know, we were in the Elite Eight five years ago and we didn't have a real post-up option. Travion Williams was just a freshman and he backed up. We had a 7-3 center that was a diver and, and he wasn't a really a low post guy even though he'd get a couple baskets here and there that way. So we just try to take our best players and that's how we start in our recruiting. Like I always tell guys, they, always, they want to know where they are. And I always tell them, well, if you're one of our top two or three scorers, here's how I see you. And if you're not one of our top two or three scorers, then you're going to have to fit around offensively those top two or three scorers, right? And so you just started off right away in recruiting to where you can't tell 13 people, like, you know, here's going to be your role. It just doesn't work that way. But there's a lot of guys that do that because they want to sign good players. Then they just deal with it later. I'd rather get that trust right away or I'd rather lose the player. You know, I don't want to get somebody on false pretenses. And then you can build from there. And then you can grow from there. And then you can just be honest with them about it. But I, I like the positionless deal. Like, I, it's not something like I'm away from. I just happen to have Zach Eady. I'm a fool if I don't anchor it around him, right? So we've learned a lot through the years, you know, with our size, you know, from Carl Landry to Jawan Johnson to Caleb Swan again, A.J. Hammonds, Isaac Haas, Travion Williams, Matt Harms. Um, we've learned a lot. You learn from your players because how people deal with it and how people go. But he's kind of the exception to the rule. You know, he can really move and he's so physical and he's skilled. But what probably separates him is his unselfishness and his competitiveness. He's a very, very competitive player. He goes, you know, big guys will take some plays off. He doesn't take plays off. You know, he runs and he, he does everything. He's a complete player. But the unselfishness, I think, really separates him because if you double, he's a passer. And if you don't, he's a scorer. We're going to take two more on the left, and then we'll come back to the right. Myron? Myron Metcalf, ESPN. Uh, Matt, it feels like momentum is pushing us toward an expanded tournament. Uh, if that happens, how do you feel about it? And what should that look like if the tournament expands? Yeah, I, I would rather. Um, it stay the way it is. I, but I also have been in a lot of those committees where I think it's important to shut up and listen to other people. So I'd love to sit in the room and listen to, to the why, you know, because I think that's, that's part of collaborating with everybody, which head coaches really have kind of been left out of that equation um, when it comes to collaborating. 
about what's best for the game. Um, I'd rather see the room change. I'd rather see that. If you, if you look on committees, whether it's the executive committee, the D1 council, um, the Rice Commission, go on and on and on. There's no current head coaches sitting in those rooms. And it doesn't mean that we got to stir the drink or make the decision, but just listen to from our vantage point, no different than you listen to a student athlete from their vantage point or a former player or an athletic director or media, whatever. Everyone has an opinion from where they sit. And I think if we can do some things of that nature, we'll improve our game, but we'll also improve our selection process. Back row. Hey, Coach. Sam Sprunger, uh, Big Talk ASAP Network. I asked your guys about him, but I want to get the coach's perspective too. What does Lance Jones do for this team that maybe not taking away from last year's team, but brings differently to the success that this year feels maybe a little different? Yeah, you know, he's got a great competitive spirit. Um, you know, he comes to practice, comes to games. He's, you know, he's excited about playing. Um, you know, he chose Purdue, didn't talk about name, image, and likeness one time. You know, when he made a decision, you know, he wanted his thing was winning. His thing was getting into the NCAA tournament, trying to win a Big Ten championship. And that jumped out right away. Um, from just a practical standpoint, like his athleticism, his quickness, he gives us another ball handler. He gives us another defender, a guy that can guard a point guard, but also can guard off the ball. So that flexibility really helps us, and it really helps Braden Smith. Second row on the right. Hi, Matt. Uh, Jamie Strashen from uh, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Um, obviously, Zach Eady's come a long way since he first arrived on campus. Uh, can you talk about his uh, evolution as a player and kind of right. where you see him kind of fitting into the rich legacy of this sport? Uh, and second question, uh, NCAA looking at uh, limiting uh, prop bets around athletes. Uh, can I get your comments on that and sure. how you see gambling affecting your sport over what you've seen the last season? Right. You know, Zach's evolution, um, you know, really starts with hard work and improving his body. So each year he's gotten better from a physical standpoint. Um, I think his experiences with the Canadian national team has been very beneficial for him. You know, when, when he played in the 19 and unders, you know, he made the all tournament team. He played a lot. He got that experience. Now with the World Cup, with the national team, he didn't play a lot. But you get a, you know, you, you have to see how the sausage is made. Like a lot of people just see great players from Canada and it's just like, it's magic. No, they, they've had to work really, really hard to get there. And for him to be able to see guys that are on that team and how they work every day, how they handle themselves um, is gold. You know, because that's what you want. Like a lot of people don't understand about being a pro. Being a pro has nothing to do with athletics. There's pros in this room. You know, there's school teachers that are pros. Like, who comes early, who stays late, who's there? The guy I played for, Gene Cady, called it a company man. Like, learn to be a company man and do what's best for your company, and things will work out for you individually. Um, your second question. Go to your second question again. I was just asking about the NCAA. Oh, the prop bets. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, anytime you're, you're, you're talking about an individual player, like, you're, you're just asking for trouble, right? You're just asking for trouble. So hopefully they can eliminate that, and, and, and that's not part of the process. But overall betting, that's, that's where we are. You know, that, that, that's where we are. So it, it puts a lot of athletes, a lot of coaches, you know, in some difficult positions where 99.9% .9 of the time it's probably not going to be anything. But there are always, and we have a lot of examples for where they have been. You know, whether that's a referee or that's been a player. You know, we're going back in, you know, in basketball a long, long time there. There's, there's a lot of things to jump out. And sometimes it doesn't happen for 10, 20, 30 years, but we have all those examples where they do. So anytime you do that, you're going to have to govern it. And, you know, how do you go about, you know, things of that nature? And so hopefully it's something that, you know, we can protect so we can protect, excuse me, and protect the integrity of the game. Um, but, but hopefully that there's, we, we don't have those prop bets. You just don't want individual names, you know, this player here gets seven assists, you get money, this and that, because you're dealing with really, really young guys at 18, 19, 20 years old, and you don't want that outside influence to affect them and affect their eligibility. We'll take two more for Coach Painter, starting on the left down the fourth row there. Hey, Matt, Brendan Quinn from The Athletic. Um, you talk about being a truth teller with, with your players, and I wonder when, when there's such like a, a clear cut point that of success for fans and for everyone. It's just, everyone just talks about the Final Four, right? Like, right. How do you approach that, you know, with, with your guys? And has that been something that you've developed and learned about of, you know, what right. to say, what not to say, history lessons, things like that? Yeah. How do you just deal with that whole kind of like 
you know, just thing. Right. Well, your expectation is your best season. So this is my 19th season at Purdue. So if we don't win the Big Ten or go to an Elite Eight, we had a bad year. That's a hair harsh, but it's the way it is. And so you just want to keep moving that bar. So, you know, like some of the guys that get treated unfairly, I'd love to be them. I'd love to be someone who wins a national championship and goes to Final Fours, and then you go to a Sweet 16 and like, what the hell happened? I, you know, I'd love to have that issue, right? You know, and, um, but that's what we're working towards. You know, we're working towards being able to, to be a program that can consistently get into the tournament in advance and have those long runs, but also not lose our soul in the process. One more question in the front on the left. Vedant Gupta, Global Kid Media. Coach Painter, six years ago in this press room, I said each the NCAA tournament's a book and each team has their own unique chapter. This year again in 2024, Purdue has a unique chapter. What is it gonna take to get to Phoenix? For us, I think it starts uh, with taking care of the basketball. I think a lot of times people want like a, a, a good catchphrase or an, uh, like a, a cute answer. Um, we're 25 and 0 this year if we have 13 or less turnovers. That, that's held true for us. Um, we're a great offensive rebounding team. Overall, by the numbers, we're a great rebounding team. I think we can be better. So if you can control that possession war, and then you have the first or second best three-point field goal percentage in the country, and then you have Zach Eady, you're, you're just keep giving yourself a chance. And what I mean by keep giving yourself a sh chance is if you're taking quality shots, and now some of the, like before when we have those turnovers and it gets past that, like you, you just reflect back on the game when you lose and you're just like, just get the ball up to the rim, right? Because so, he's very good at soft misses. When you, when you get long misses, that's not him. That's going to be a guard, right? So if you, if you take really good shots, you're going to have more soft misses. So if you take him away from things and you want to full front him, he is in rebound position. So if you can have soft misses and you're around him, he is in perfect position and he's going to get that or he's great at the tap backs. So like from a functional standpoint for us to be able to, to win two games here, it's like winning the first two games of the season for us or the two games in the middle. Like nothing changes for us. Nothing changes from us from last year. We've just changed personnel. We've tried to be more efficient and we've just tried to be better at what we do. Thanks coach, appreciate your time. Right. See you tomorrow. Thank you.
your blue, right? Or your blue and your orange. All right, welcome back, everyone. Welcome to the dais here at Little Caesars Arena as we continue to preview the 2024 Midwest Regional. We appreciate everyone's coverage. We'll be starting our press conference here with head coach Greg McDermott here shortly. As a courtesy to other media members, please silence your cell phones if you haven't done so already. Remember to raise your hand. We do have mic holders on either side. Speak clearly into the microphone, please, as this press conference is being transcribed by ASAP Sports. With that, we'll begin today's session. We'll uh, kick it over to Coach McDermott for, for an opening statement, and then we'll open the floor to questions. Obviously excited uh, to be back in a Sweet 16. Um, proud of the way uh, our group performed uh, last week in Pittsburgh. Um, you know, this time of year, you just never know. You know, um, we've we've stayed relatively healthy, uh, which has really helped us with our with our core group. And they just uh, continue to believe in themselves. They're incredibly connected, and you know that's the reason we've had the season that we had. And you know, realize we have a you know. A, heck of a task in front of us in, in Tennessee um, with how talented and, and well coached that group is. Thanks, Coach. We'll start the questions on the right side in the back. Uh, Myron Metcalf, ESPN. Greg, it feels like the momentum, momentum is pushing us towards an expanded tournament. Uh, how do you feel about that? And if so, what should that look like if it happens? You know, I, people aren't going to like what I have to say, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably in favor um, of expansion to a certain degree. Uh, and simply because last weekend is an incredible experience for every student athlete that gets to participate. So why are we only having 15% or 17% of our teams participate? Why not, I don't know what the number is, is it 15, is it 20, you know, somebody smarter than me will figure that out. But why, why not, in this world of student athlete welfare and doing more and more for student athletes, why, why not give more student athletes that experience? And I think most people that don't want the tournament messed with, it's, be, it's for selfish reasons because they like it the way it is. And that's not a good enough reason, in my opinion. Um, if, it's really good, if it's really about the student athletes, uh, then give more, give more opportunities for student athletes and, that have had a good season. Um, I think it includes more of the mid-majors. Uh, and there, you know, this year was a, was a you know, not necessarily a normal year and that there were a lot of bid stealers. So I think more than at least in recent history, there was a lot of teams left out um, that, that could win games in the tournament. Thanks, Coach. We'll go to the front row here on the right. Can you give us at all a sky report on, on Dalton Connect and who do you think will match up with him? And with him and Baylor, do you think they're an example of what can be good out of the transfer portal? Maybe players that didn't have a lot of choices coming out of high school, they go to a smaller school, they take off, they go to a bigger school. Yeah, I mean, they're both great stories of, you know, perseverance and uh, a tremendous work ethic. Um, and, you know, obviously they both had great years. You know, two years ago, you know, Dalton was at Northern Colorado and, and Baylor was at South Dakota State. And now you have a first-team All-American and a third-team All-American playing against each other in the Sweet 16. So, the, you know, unbelievable story. Um, I don't know that you guard him with one guy. I think we have to give him different looks. Um, and that's, that's the plan. And, you know, hopefully take away his easy ones um, because he's going to make enough tough ones because he's an elite player. But, uh, you know, he and Baylor, their journeys are similar in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, to watch their growth and development from, you know, when they were a freshman in college to where they are today is – is really a testament to their work ethic. Second row here. Maddie Marinas, White and Blue Review. Mac, with, with respect to obviously what Tennessee presents defensively, how, how actually tricky is corralling Dalton and Zakai on the other end of the floor and making sure they're kind of out of sync? Yeah, I don't know that you can totally get them out of sync. Um, you know, they have to see bodies. But, you know, the problem with Tennessee is they're, uh, you know, they're unselfish. You know, they have. 567 assists and 356 turnovers. So um, they're a team that's more than willing to make the extra pass, and Dalton is included in that. So, um, you know, that, that makes a team difficult to defend. You know, they run a lot of actions to try to get him loose and then play off that. Uh, but when you've got a guy that scores at his level and it's still unselfish, um, it makes it very difficult to defend. 
Back to the front row here on the right, Coach. Matt Satilli, KETV Omaha. Coach, one of the fans you're going to have back home rooting you on, Jack Elliott. You called him the most courageous 12-year-old in Omaha. Can you just quickly explain what he means to you and how he's inspired this program this year? Yeah, you know, I, I met Jack by chance. Uh, uh, I think it was a make-a-wish request, uh, kind of at the last minute. Um, and he, we got him to our game, and, and he came to our shoot-around and spent time with our team. And, uh, you know, Jack's uh, – he's a tough little guy, man. And his, his outlook on life going through something very difficult at his age with radi radiation and chemo and everything that uh, – they're doing to his body, um, and yet he he shows up with a smile on his face, and you know texts me before and after every game, and and has developed a really good relationship with Baylor as well, and he was by practice the other day, so we got to spend a little time with him. But you know it's a good uh, it's a good reminder of to our guys, uh, you know how good we have it and how blessed we are to be able to do what we do, and you, you see, a, and you know for us to complain yeah, about a you know, a, a missed shot, and we look over at Jack, what he's going through, you know, we've got to get over ourselves a little bit. Um, so he's been an inspiration to me, and uh, I know he has been to our team as well. We're going to flip it over to the left side in the third row. Abby Gallant, Creightonian. You guys have talked a lot about how the process has been really important to get you guys here. How important is it to continue to trust your process and your training as you're making this run? Yeah, that's a great question, and it's uh, – <clears throat> You know, that's what it's about. You know, we, we've talked about process all the way back to June and trusting your work and be consistent with your daily habits. And if you do that, you'll be put in a position where you're going to have a chance. Um, and even though it looked a little bleak late in the, that Oregon game, I think they never really had any self-doubt creep in because they put so much work in. Now, you can still put work in and the shot may not go in. Uh, but had that shot no go, not go in, I would have still felt great about the shot Baylor got because I've watched him practice that shot hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. So um, he did the work, he prepared himself, and sometimes sometimes you're successful in those situations and sometimes you're not. But uh, you know these guys believe in each other, they believe in their work, um, and you know that makes it for a pretty fun experience from a from a coaching perspective. Staying on the left side, one rollback. Chris Solari, Detroit Free Press. Uh, I'm wondering about kind of the other side of. Baylor and Dalton's story is what the transfer portal has done, particularly in the tournament, but beyond, you know, when you see guys now, their team ends, they go into the portal, you know, in the first week or they don't make the tournament. I guess what does that do for the, the game as a whole? I mean, is guys going up or guys going down? You know, I'm all about the student athlete and, and them having choices. They deserve those choices. Uh, could we do it at a different time? Uh, I wish we could. Um, I would like the stories uh, from Selection Sunday until Championship Monday to be about the teams in the NCAA tournament, um, not about who's leaving and who's joining this program. Um, it's just unfortunate that uh, that's such a big part of what's going on in the daily news, and I think it takes away from uh, celebrating the teams that have had incredible years and have made it to this point. Um, is there a way to maneuver that time a little? Um, I, I hope so, because uh, it's it's very difficult. You know, my staff, while we're trying to prepare for Tennessee, uh, our, my guys are also working the portal. You, you have to. Um, and that's an unfortunate thing for a team that's in the tournament trying to advance, um, that you have to spend that amount of time. Because if you don't make calls, then you're out. So. Um, I don't like the timing of it, but uh, you know I understand why it's there. Let's go back to the right side on the fourth row. Yeah, Joe Rexer with the Athletic. Greg, just wondering what kind of challenges <coughs> you expect Zakai Ziegler to pose on both ends, and have you seen an opponent this year you'd compare to him? I don't know. Uh, you know, Posh Alexander played at Butler this year. You know, very disruptive defensively. Uh, still don't know that he's as, as quick as, uh, as Ziegler is. Um, you know, he gets to spots offensively, so disruptive defensively. And, um, you know, Coach Barnes has really, um, you know, carved out a huge role for him on that team on both ends of the floor. He's hit big shots. Uh, uh, you know, he can whatever. I don't know how many steals he's got. It's a lot. Um, uh, but just as a menace defensively uh, with everything that he does, uh, 
he's a terrific point guard and, you know, in a lot of ways kind of the, the straw that stirs the drinks for them in a lot of ways because of the impact he has on defensively and the plays he makes for other people offensively. I mean, two, 204 assists to 76 turnovers in the SEC, that's big time. Back to the right side in the second row. Mac, you talked about, you know, you and the players talked about the impact that kind of finding joy within that stress had on the end of the Oregon game. I'm curious how how you keep hold of that while knowing that you're 40, you could be 40 minutes away from your season being over. It's the makeup of the team. And I think as a coach, the longer I've been doing this, you got to let guys be who they are. And, you know, we, you've been around practice enough, Matt. We don't, we don't take ourselves too serious. Um, uh, we don't take each other too serious. We have some fun with the game. I think some coaches, especially young coaches, and I was probably guilty of this when I was younger, there's so much pressure to win and be successful uh, that you coach the joy right out of the game. And uh, I don't ever want to do that to my guys. I want to make sure that you know, they started playing this game because they fell in love with it. And if I do something to take the joy away from that, then I'm doing them a disservice. So um, this group really has, they have fun. And I, and I, you know, there's parts of practice, there's drills. You know, we've joked about drills they don't like, uh, which usually is my favorite drill. If, if they don't like it, it's probably a good drill. Uh, <clears throat> but they truly enjoy coming to practice every day and being together. And that's, that's been pretty cool to, to witness. Back to the left side in the back row. John Walker, Omaha World Herald. Mac, you, your initial takeaway was Tennessee's defense, obviously. Have you learned anything else about them since diving, uh, diving into the film throughout the week? Yeah, you know, I've known Coach Barnes for a long time and obviously uh, coached against him when I was at Iowa State and he was at Texas. And an interesting story, uh, when Bruce Rasmussen uh, called me and asked me to, to meet with him about the Creighton job when I was still at Iowa State, I still had a few years left on my contract at Iowa State. Uh, Creighton was still in the valley, and I was meeting Bruce in Des Moines, a uh, 40, 45 minute drive. Uh, when I got in my car and pulled out of my driveway, I called Rick Barnes. Um, and because I had questions for him about that point in my career, this kind of move. And I hung up the phone with him when I pulled into the hotel parking lot 40 minutes later. And he just drilled me with questions and things to think about, uh, short term, long term, uh, that I think speaks to who Rick Barnes is. Um, he's, a, he's been a great friend of mine. He's, I've always respected um, you know, the way he's coached his teams and how he's gone about it. And this Tennessee team, is, uh, you know, it's, it, it's got some of what he did offensively when he was at Texas, uh, you know, trying to run some cutters off the basket standard under the basket. Uh, I, I prepared for that before, and he does that a lot with Dalton. Um, but defensively, there's a, uh, uh, there's a standard there that's really impressive with how they play and how they compete and how disruptive they are every single play. And it can turn a game in, in, a, in a flash. So you know, that message has been drilled into our guys over the course of the week. Whether we're ready for it, you know, we'll see. Uh, but uh, Coach Barnes has done a great job with this program. It's been you know, fun to watch him uh, be as successful as he has been from afar. First row on the left, Coach. Vedant Gupta, Global Media. Coach, this team has a lot of guys with unique backgrounds. Ryan's a Fisher, Baylor was a state champion quarterback. Steven's married and was an entrepreneur selling sauce at a young age. I mean, talk about bringing different interests together, this team identity, and how their bond helps them play as <clears throat> successful as they do on the court. Yeah, they're, they're you know, they, they're, as you mentioned, they, they all have a lot of different interests, uh, but they have a common interest in their love for the game of basketball. And because they're selfless uh, on the basketball floor, they also like to learn about each other off the floor. And you know they, they spend a fair amount of time with each other off the floor, even though their interests are, are very different. Um, I know, I know uh, Kalkbrenner took Ashworth fishing here a few weeks ago in Omaha, and we had a nice day. And Stephen you know, caught his first fish that day or whatever. So uh, you know, they do some pretty cool stuff together, but it's uh, uh, you know, their leadership, that, that group of Baylor, Trey, Ryan, and, and Steven, Francisco, just like off the charts, like not about me, uh, not a lot of an agenda for themselves. Uh, let's figure out a way for us to be as good as we possibly can be. 
take two more for Coach. Let's start in the third row here on the left. Yeah, Coach, just to follow up, why, why was Rick the one you called about the job that day, and did it have a lot to do with what you ended up deciding? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've always had a lot of respect for Coach Barnes, and I got I didn't really know him until I got to the Big 12, and then, you you know, you go and you spend time with guys at, uh, you know, postseason conference meetings, uh, media days, and then you get to know him and you sit with him recruiting uh, – and we just developed a friendship, and he's someone that uh, that I respected, that had, you know, moved around a few times, you know, from George Mason to Providence to Clemson, um, and had been in that situation. And uh, of the guys in the Big 12 at that time, he was the one I thought that could maybe give me, a, uh, make sure I'm thinking about everything before I made that decision. And, and to his credit, he asked a lot of the right questions, and uh, um, you know, then when I had the opportunity, I decided to do it. And, it's been a been a great run. Okay, Coach, we're going to wrap it up with a question on Zoom. Uh, Parth, we've unmuted your line. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, Mason's. Uh, it's a great story. Um, you know, in this day and age, not many young people are willing to redshirt. Uh, you know, obviously Mason's parents, uh, Mike and Jen, you know, Mike has a, uh, obviously a very accomplished professional career. And Jen was a, you know, terrific volleyball player at Florida. So they understood that, that Mason needed time and he needed to follow a process. And uh, that first process was a red shirt. And then last year it was playing off the bench and, and trying to spark the team. Um, and then in the off season, once the season was over last year, we talked about you know our expectation was he should be fighting for this starting job this year. And to Mason's credit, he's worked um, and he's done just that. And obviously was a was huge for us in the game against Akron uh, to gain some momentum with a big three right before halftime, and then you know hit a couple more coming out of the locker room. So um, he's gotten better. He's worked hard and has become a very important part of our team. Appreciate it, Coach. Thanks for your time. Thank you. All right, pleased to continue here with the Creighton Blue Jays. Gentlemen, congratulations for advancing to the Sweet 16. Welcome to Detroit. From your left to your right, we are joined by Ryan Kalkbrenner, Trey Alexander, and ba Baylor Shilerin. So we will jump into the Q&A from the media in the room here. First up, Larry Lage on the left. Question for Baylor. Can you reflect on your journey here, and what ch choices did you have coming out of high school, and do you feel like you made the most of your opportunities in the transfer portal to be here and on this stage with this team? Yeah, I mean, coming out of high school, I only had one Division One offer, um, and and uh, obviously chose to go to South Dakota State um, and then transfer to Creighton. And I just think that um, you know I'm happy with the journey and um, how it all worked out for me. Um, and I think you know going through the transfer portal was um, you know one of the best decisions I made, and, and I'm, I'm very happy with how it all played out. Second row on the right. Matty Rams, White and Blue Review. For anybody, I'm curious what the difference is in the feeling and the prep and just the lead up to all of it, all the kind of the extra juice compared to this stage last year and going through it the first time together. Ryan, want to take that first? Um, I think last year, you know, 
we're just a little extra excited about it, doing it for the first time. But uh, I mean, this year you got a little more experience, so you're still super excited about it and trying to take it all in. But uh, it's almost easier to take it all in because you've been here before and you can take a step back easier. Trey, want to add to that? Uh, yeah, kind of what Cobb said. You kind of know what to expect now, even though you're still very grateful to be here and you're excited. You know what type of prep it takes now, so we can kind of know we know what the feeling is to be here and we know what it takes to get the job done. Let's flip it back over to the left side in the fourth row. Chris Solari, Detroit Free Press. Baylor, uh, when you make that decision to go to South Dakota State, it wasn't that far from home, but when you were going through that process of leaving, how did, how, what were the things that you were thinking about at that point, and how do you feel that the, the move to Creighton has maybe elevated your game from where you were at that point in the Summit League? Yeah, well, I wanted, I wanted to go to a place, um, I wanted to go to a place where, uh, you know, I thought that I could grow as a player um, in a play, place that I thought fit the way that I played. Um, and, you know, when I first entered the transfer portal, I wasn't really thinking about anything in, in, in specific. But uh, once Creighton had reached out, um, I knew that, you know, I wanted to come back home. Um, and I felt like um, just b being here at Creighton these last two years and playing in the Big East the last two years and just against a lot of the top co competition in, in just college basketball has um, elevated my game to just a, a different level than it was um, in the Summit League. Additional questions for the student athletes. Back to the right side. I'm just curious, what, what boxes you guys feel you need to check tomorrow to score effectively against the defense like Tennessee's? Trey? Uh, I would say just don't hold the ball too long. Uh, they're a very good team in terms of raking in the gaps and turning you over. So I think that we limit turnovers. We're able to get out in transition by getting stops like that. I think those are some of the boxes we have to check on the offensive end. Ryan, anything else for you? Uh, yeah, same. Same stuff Trey said, uh, just taking care of the ball, making sure we're getting shots and not turning it over, and you know that will feed into our offense. Back to left side in the third row here. Abby Gallant, Creightonian. Um, this is for any of you guys. No, you've never made it past this weekend. Does that kind of add a little bit of extra pressure, motivation, or kind of both when you're thinking about your performances that have to be over this weekend? Baylor, want to take that one? <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I mean, pressure's a privilege, obviously, and obviously we've never made it past this weekend, um, but we can't get to Sunday without, um, you know, taking care of business tomorrow, so our, really our whole focus is on tomorrow, and, um, you know, we've we played a lot of basketball games in our career, and um, I think we just pr stay calm and, and, and collected, and we just prepare the same way. Um, even though it's a bigger stage, um, you can't really change your preparation. Chris, in the back left there. Uh, this is again for Baylor. Um, did you did you and Dalton connect, meet up at all on the AAU circuit or anything when you guys were coming up? Or, and have you kind of followed his journey uh, through Northern Colorado and all that? Um, yeah, we never met on the AAU circuit. Um, however, uh, I had a buddy who went to Northern Colorado and was teammates with him um, in high school. Um, but we we don't know each other personally. But I do know, obviously, you know he. Went to a smaller school like I did and then transferred up and, and has had a phenomenal season. So, Sticking on the left side here in the back row. Bill, Bill kind of on that same note, how surreal is that, that the, the two All-Americans in this game are, are kind of transfer portal success stories? Yeah, I mean, it just shows that, you know, you have to run your, you run your race. Everybody's different. Um, you know, obviously I didn't have the, the high-level offers coming out of – high school right away but um, you know I stayed down and trusted my work and, and, and ended up um, blessed to be in this position now so any other questions for the players front row here Baylor how much do you expect to match up with Dalton and uh, when you are what what do you try to do well obviously um <clears throat> He's a tremendous player, and uh, you know he hits tough shots. And so for me, um, just trying to make it as difficult as I can on him. Obviously, he's going to hit some tough shots because he's a tremendous player. But I think at the end of the day, um, like I said, just trying to make everything he does difficult and, and not give him anything easy. Anything else for these guys, gentlemen? Thank you. See you tomorrow.
thing, so that's <laughs> yeah. Must be weird thing to have a different one.
Check, 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 check. Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Just speak right in like normal. Check one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Check one, two. Nice and clear. Check one, two.
Check one, two, Little Caesars Arena, Midwest Regional. Check one, two. No worries. Check, check, one, two. Check, check, one, two. Check, check, one, two. Check, check, one, two.
Check, check, one, two. Check, check, one, two. Mind power. I think it's it's a multitude of things. They're trying to work it out. I don't think I think it's just a few things going on. We're not used to activating in this room, as you know. You know, they're trying to. <laughs> you said it, not me. All right, good afternoon. Welcome back to the interview room here at Little Caesars Arena as we continue to preview the 2024 Midwest Regional. We're pleased to be joined uh, with the Talent Tennessee Volunteers. Fellows, congratulations on reaching the Sweet 16 here in Detroit. We're joined from your left to your right by Jonas Adu, Dalton Connect, and Jemai Meshack. We will uh, open the floor for a Q&A here shortly, but just as a reminder, uh, please make sure you are silencing your cell phones, uh, speaking directly into a microphone. We do have mic holders on either side of the room. Um, so we can appropriately uh, transcribe the press conferences via ASAP Sports. With that, we'll jump straight into the Q&A for the student athletes, starting with Larry on the left. So, um, can you reflect on your journey um, from you know, junior college or Palo Alto, and now you're here, and you hope that maybe you're an inspiration to high school players that aren't, you know, showered with a lot of offers or people who are thinking about transferring out? Uh, yeah, I'd say uh, I'd uh, transfer, or not transfer, but... Uh, made a lot of people's you know there's some people are not the t uh, highest rated players and stuff like that and it just shows like you go a different route uh going juco and stuff and like you said in the transfer portal i hit that too so you know you can make multiple ways to get to one of the best programs in the nation so i think it just shows that you don't have to be the highest rated kid second row on the left I've always been a confident player. I feel like everybody on our team last year and this year have always been confident. So I wouldn't say the confidence level was different. I would just say probably, you know, I think the fact is like we're healthier. You know, we're, we're healthier. We have people able to play. We have people available. We have um, more depth. Um, and I just think we, we are going into it um, knowing that 
nothing has to change. We don't have to adjust to anything. We don't have to um, do anything different than what we've been doing all year, which I feel like is important for us as a team. It's just making sure that we're all on the same page. And the fact that we've gotten this whole year to grow and to uh, grow and to come together and, and to really like learn each other's game and really be comfortable with that, um, I think it's just going to go to go to show as we play more games and as we um, get to where we are now, that it's all going to come together in, in big moments like this. Let's flip it over the right side in the first row. Uh, I'll just say, you know, stay in the gym as much as you can. Uh, you know, you'll chase your dream and everything will happen for a reason. You, uh, you know, hard work pays off. Sort of the one thing I'd say, hard work pays off. Additional questions for the student athletes, please. Go back to the first row. Let's start with Jonas on that one, please. Uh, I say from the early trip, that's when we uh, truly started the bond off the court because, you know, we spent so much time with each other, you know, and in other countries just learning about each other. So I feel like from there on, like, we just kept growing into brothers for real from there. Dalton? Yeah, I would say uh, for me it was when I first got on campus, uh, you know, all these guys, uh, like Sakai and stuff, we'd all go get food and stuff and create that bond early. And then when everyone got on campus, we was all, you know, playing video games or going out and getting food or just staying in the locker room after practice. And Jemai. Um, I just think, you know, I think just the bond of uh, having the tough games that, that really showed our competitive spirit and I think the tough practices as well. Um, when you have uh, different games like that, it really builds and it, it shows a, a team's true character and it brings uh, your teammates together. And I think that's what happened to us throughout the season. Obviously, we you know we started really well. Um, we had a really you know really good season overall. But there were certain games and certain stretches where you know we were still trying to get to know our teammates and our and our strengths and our weaknesses. And I think going through those games really helped us uh, trust each other more on and off the court. And I feel like if you have that bond off the court, on the court is going to be you know extremely easy. So um, I think with that, with that being said, this whole year has just been a journey for everybody. And I think. You know, we wouldn't take it back for anything. And this is why we want to keep continuing to go, get farther and farther in this tournament just to justify what we went through through this whole year and, and that it was worth it. So um, I think just showing just uh, how those losses and how those close games and those tough games really build character and really build uh, togetherness. Back to the first row here on the right side, Larry. Can each of you share with me one thing that has jumped out at from the scouting report or watching film from crazy that has your respect? We'll go right down the line here, Jonathan. Uh, we know they're a really good offensive team, and they like to get up a lot of threes. So, you know, we got to take pride in being the best defensive team in the nation, which we believe we are, and just locking on that uh, side of the scouting report. Dalton? Yeah, like Jonah said, they're a great offensive team, but also uh, they make sure that they don't foul and get uh, teams to the foul line. So that will definitely be uh, something that we'll need to watch out for. And then Jemai? Um, I think they both made like really great points. Definitely a, a high offensive team that wants to get a lot of threes up, wants to get out and run. Uh, and like DK said, they don't want to foul. They, they kind of want to stay back. They don't want to force a lot of turnovers. They just want to kind of force you into a short shot clock. Um, but I think the, the thing that's going to get us the edge on the game is what Jonas said is, is taking pride in our defense. Um, and if whether we're hitting shots or not, if our defense is where it's supposed to be, we can create offense in transition where I feel like that's where we can, we're, we're the best at is, is getting out in transition, creating easy layups, getting to the foul line. And um, I think, you know, as much as they've had, you know, their tall center down low, being able to feed Jonas the ball and being able to feed our big guys the ball to try to get them points and, and maybe get him in foul trouble. But just trying to use everybody on the court uh, and, and space the floor out and really just, you know, run our offense. Let's go back to the left side in the second row. West Harbor 24 7 Sports. Jonas, when you kind of study Colbert as a big guy on film, sort of, what have you seen from him and what have you learned from some of your matchups this season against some of those sort of really big guys that you played? 
I mean, I watch. He's he's pretty big. I mean, he's about seven one, seven two, two seventy. I mean, I played. I mean, a lot of. I mean, pretty much every single you know big in the nation that's like really top rated. So I feel like I've you know prepared for this moment. You know, just to help my team. You know, lock in defensively and offensively on the scouting report. Any other questions for these guys? OK, seeing none. Thanks, fellas. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, as a reminder, we do have mic holders on either side. Please be sure to introduce yourself, your media affiliation, so Coach can put a name with a face. We'll get going with um, Q&A here, and we'll start out with whoever's ready in the second row on the right. Rob Lewis with BallQuest.com. Coach, just the, the scout, what are a couple of things that jump out at you that are primary focuses when you, when you get ready to play Creighton? Well, there's a, a number of different things. Obviously, one uh, – Transition, they're a uh, really terrific team in transition. Uh, discipline, really have, a, I think, a high level uh, of basketball IQ, and they know each other so well. They know what they're looking for. They want, they know, play within the rhythm of what they do, and just an extremely sound team defensively, and uh, they do a great job of uh, helping each other. And uh, I've known Greg for a long time and uh, coaching against him in the – in the Big 12, and uh, just a terrific basketball coach. And uh, his team, uh, I think, plays the way he wants to play, them to play. Thanks, Coach. We're going to go to the left side in the second row. Yeah, Coach Gentry, SS Tennessee. And uh, Coach McDermott told a story about when he first w was deciding to take the job at Creighton that he called you on the way to the interview. Do you, do you remember that conversation and what you talked about at that time? Well, one thing I'll tell you about Greg is that he is a he's a program builder, and uh, really truly a, a, a great offensive mind. I I would after every time we played him, I would uh, take something from what he did to us and add to what we were doing. And uh, but uh, I'm sure the conversation would have been one that everybody would want him in the league because he stands for all the right things. He's done it the way that uh, you'd want any coach to do it. He's a guy that could coach at any level. And, uh, uh, and again, 
when you're in a league that's as competitive as the leagues are that we played in, you want to know that the person that you're competing against is doing it the right way. And uh, you knew he would do that. You knew he would build a high-level program. And I think he did that, you know. And um, he uh, has done it certainly at, at Creighton and everywhere he's been. And you ask anybody that's in coaching today about him, they would have the utmost respect for him, obviously, as a basketball coach. But as a as a, a person that represents our business the way you want it, you can't find one better. Do we have follow-up here in the second row? Wes Rucker with 24-7 uh, Sports. Rick, when you look at Carl Brenner, the big guy for, for Creighton, w what sort of challenges does he present and how much of that experience that your guys have had against some of those, I think every elite big man in the country, pretty much y'all have played this season, how much could that help? Well, again, he's a terrific uh, rim protector. I think he's uh, when he, they use him on the offensive end where he facilitates, he sees the floor. He, uh, great feel for his teammates and what he wants to do. I think he does a really good job of finding his space where he wants to be effective. And uh, we played against players, uh, like you mentioned, but they're all different. And uh, he's, a, he's a tough cover for uh, our post players, but yet, uh, and they are obviously their drop coverage that they, they use. I mean, he's just kind of daring you. What, what are you going to do here? Forces you into making the right decision. and. Uh, but um, he, uh, he's a person that you've got to give a lot of attention to. Coach, let's go to the front row here. Larry Leach and Associated Press. Seems like yesterday you are here for the exhibition game against uh, Michigan State. Uh, yeah. Can you talk about Baylor Shireman? Give us a scouting report. And with him and Dalton, are they an example of what can be good about the transfer portal? Yeah, I don't think there's any question that, you know, you give young people an opportunity and they can make the most of it. Uh, and, and I think we know there's players, and we, this tournament you see players that play at different levels that can shine in, when the big light's on them. And I think both of those guys have won made just unbelievable impacts on, on their teams. And uh, Shireman, when you see him, he's relentless. You know, he, uh, you, you can't, can't stop. I mean, he's uh, got a great feel. And again, uh, Greg has done a great job, I think, putting all those guys in a position where they have a comfort level about them, but uh, they play a lot of minutes. They don't foul, uh, but he is a, another guy that if you just blink for a second, he's going he's to beat you some way, and uh, so you've got to be on edge. Let's go to the, on the left side in the back row, Coach. Uh, Dane O'Neill at The Athletic. Rick, you talked about program builders, and I would argue that probably all four of you guys here are program builders, but you're also in a business of results and whether it's trying to get to the fi Final Four or win a national championship, there's always that push-pull. How do you stick to your convictions to kind of build the program when there's also the need to achieve whatever it is the next thing on the to-do list is? Well, I, I think, obviously, the key is adjustments. You know, when, when the game changes, uh, you, you've got to change and make the necessary adjustments. Uh, uh, but I do – we do believe in uh, building through – you know, we want high school players. And now, if I were at a different level, I might not think that today. I think a year from now when the COVID year is over with, it could ch sway back a little bit where the older guys aren't, uh, aren't uh, here as much, you know, not as many older guys. But I think that's been the, the case throughout our time in basketball is that there's been so many different changes from, you know, everything. And, and so I think you have to be able to adapt. And the guys that I know that I've been able to grow up in the business with and that are still with us and doing it are guys that uh, have that ability to adapt and, but yet not get away from their core philosophy in terms of what they believe. Coach, we're going to go to the right side here in the fourth row. Rick Russo, WVLT Knoxville. Coach, I know the fellas want to win for you. What does it mean to you to see them have success? Well, again, I'm fortunate that, you know, I've been able to be a part of college basketball for a long time. They, they get a four- or five-year run. And uh, it is something that, um, that they will look back one day and – think that, hey, you know, I, I had a chance to be a part of that. And uh, it's something that you never, ever take for granted. And uh, to get here is, is hard. It gets, it's getting harder and harder every year. And to move is, uh, I mean, we know that every seed has proven they could win, and it's hard to move on. But uh, I, I just, I, I love it for our players. We've got a good group of guys. And uh, a year ago, they found a way to get to the Sweet 16 without Sakai and, and uh 
as coaches, we do what we do for the players. And uh, we appreciate when they do what we ask them to do as well. And when you get a group of guys that have bought into each other and are willing to play for each other, you want to see it last as long as you, it possibly can. Back to the left side in the third row. Yeah, Rick, did, did y'all come out okay health-wise from, from Charlotte? And is, uh, is Santi good to go tomorrow? Yeah, he's just under the weather a little bit right now, but he, uh, we expect him to be ready, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right side, row two. Coach, what makes uh, Creighton's kind of drop defense unique, and, and how do you get how do you avoid getting you know caught into that trap of, of taking a bunch of mid range shots? Well, we don't care about the mid. I mean, we do what we do. We're going to do. I mean, we're not based strictly on analytics. We're going to get our players in position. If they're good mid range shooters, we want them to take those shots. And uh, what makes them good is because they're solid. They they do what they do. They're uh, a, a team that they don't foul. Uh, we don't believe me. I don't think there's a team in the country that uh, teaches to foul. And uh, you know we don't want to foul either. We want to play a little bit different than they do. But yet uh, we're not trying to foul. I can tell you that because uh, I mean they're a good shooting team, a free throw shooting team. And but uh, there's there's so many different ways you can play defense. Just like there's so many different ways you can play offense. And they've got their style that that's gotten them here. We have and. You can pretty much expect both teams are going to do what they do that has gotten them this far. Back to the left side in the fourth row. Rick, you hear the term players coach today, just the idea of you know coaches having a stronger relationship uh, with their players. How have you evolved uh, as a coach in terms of how you relate to your guys throughout your career? Well, one, I've always known it's about them, and there's times in the past I didn't do a great job, and I've said many times I've gone back and apologized to players that I didn't think I'd did my job with them, but uh, uh, I think if you ask our players today, uh, it would bother me if they didn't tell you I was the most consistent guy on the floor every day. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to do my job, uh, but when it's over with, I'm going to we're two people, and I'm going to respect them for that. But I hope they respect the job as a coach and staff we have to do and. And again, I think the best thing a coach can do is consistency every day. What, whatever it is you're demanding with your details, you got to stay with that. But when it, when it's over with, uh, you want them to know that hey, if, if you've been on them hard, hey, there's a reason behind it. And uh, but uh, I don't want them to ever not look forward to coming back to practice, not looking forward to coming back to with their individual workouts, whatever it may be. And it goes back. It's not just me. It's our staff. I mean, uh, we're constantly talking uh, our staff we have a, a great feel for our team and when you're around people as much as we're around each other you can read body language you can read where guys are and and the question is to me is transparency you got to confront it head on you just can't think it's going to go away if there is a problem and and uh, but a, a lot of it goes back to our staff I just have a great group of guys around me that are as fully invested as you can possibly be Anything else for Coach Barnes? Coach, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow.